Tell your mistress Lord Vulcan is here to see her. Welcome. At your service, Miss Staveley. May I present Lady Isabel Gillingham, her brother, Lord Peter Gillingham, and Lord John Burley. Well, you must be hungry. I'll send to the kitchen. Uh, Miss Staveley, we will not hear of it. Well, a glass of wine, then. Hmm? Eudora, show our guests into the drawing room. And Meadows, will you bring out some wine? Miss perhaps you and I might talk. It hadn't occurred to me you would be so young. I was a late child. My mother died giving birth to me. It puts a different complexion on matters. Why? To begin with, you can't possibly go on living in this house. Since it now belongs to me, people would assume you were my... And I understand from Nicholas that the dancer La Flamme already fills that position. I have ready the deeds of the estate, a list of the tenants and those who receive pensions from my father. You would wish to continue to pay those? Of course. There's also a list of the livestock on the home farm. Now, I'm afraid the accounts are not in very good order. My estate manager will sort them out before the house is sold. Sold? Naturally, since you can't live here and I have no use for it. I suppose so. I hadn't considered that. Which leaves you. What am I to do with you, Miss Staveley? I'm in your hands, sir. I must honor my father's debt. And I cannot, for my reputation, cancel it. Knowing something of your reputation, I well understand that. I believe the best answer would be for you to stay for the time being with my mother at Mandrake, the family home. May I bring my maid, Eudora, and my dog? Naturally. I will send them on ahead to make your arrival a little less strange for you. Thank you. It's a long journey. Therefore, you yourself will travel in my most comfortable coach. You are most kind. I shall write to my mother, telling her to expect you. I will come on later. Until some solution suggests itself, Miss Staveley, let us remain as we are, two strangers brought together by a game of chance. Ah. Try not to be afraid of my mother. Why? Serena, I know little of men. I'm aware of what they say about him. I've never been more baffled by a man in my life. I was just remarking how quick the journey is from London these days. I swear that Overoak gets busier by the month. That man, Lord Rutum, I can't bear to be near him. His eyes, they... I've been put next to him at dinner. You will not be. May I retire? And run away? You're right. He should be the one to run away. Justin, my dearest. Miss Staveley. Miss Gillingham. How stunning you look, Miss Staveley.
Oh, Justin. Isabel? I brought Nicholas for you. I knew you'd be pleased. Justin, you promised to show me how to play Farron. Nick! Livelier than Stabley Court, Miss Stabley. I must say, it has quite taken my breath away. I mean, all, all that out there. I didn't Justin tell you. His mother's a gambler, too. Fanatical. When London became too hot for her, she turned this place into the biggest gaming house in Europe. She collects two and a half percent of the stakes. It's illegal, of course. But if Bo Nash got away with it in Bath half a century ago, why shouldn't she? Her trouble is, as fast as she collects it, she gambles it away herself. <laughs> I've seen her wager a thousand guineas on the turn of a card. I guess for heaven's sake, you look like a lovesick calf. If you want her, go out and get her. She has eyes for no one but that confounded Vulcan. You've got to let a girl know you're there. She probably hasn't even seen you. What the deuce do you mean, hasn't seen me? I'm around her the whole time. <laughs> if you don't understand that, you understand nothing. You are interested in panelling? Yes. Well, that is... We had something like it in the library at Stabley Court. In this house, it really does not pay to be curious. You must have heard Mandrake is haunted. Well, you never know what ghost you may meet. Well, if Mandrake is haunted, I cannot blame the ghosts. The house is so beautiful. I like to hear you say that. I love Mandrake. Part is Saxon. Then there is Norman, Edward the Confessor, Elizabethan, Restoration, Queen Anne. Each generation has added to and improved that house. It's a great house and a gracious mm -hmm. one. Are you happy here? There's so many strangers. You were happy when I placed you next to your cousin Nicholas at dinner. I'm very fond of Nicholas. You contemplate marrying him? I do not, any more than he wishes to marry me. He's in love with Lady Isabel. And you? I'm in love with no one. Least of all the man to whom you are betrothed. Shall I make you fall in love with me, Serena? Are you afraid of love, or merely of me?
My dear Miss Stapley, how charming you look. I trust you're enjoying yourself. Warn my mother that the Coast Guards are here. Get her through the door behind the paddling. What is it? What, what's happened? My name's Serena Staveley, and I fear my story is a bit of a strange one. I was won in a wager by the Lord Vulcan. <laughs> by the Lord Vulcan? You were really? Oh, what a rogue the fellow must be. There was a huge fortune waiting in trust for my son Justin on my death. So, we waited until he went on the grand tour of Europe, and then I died. And he became Lord Vulcan and a very rich man. The family was saved. And I retired down here. That's dreadful. Oh, for poor Justin, not for me. You see, my dear, I, I've always been a scholar. So here, I could complete my life's work, which was the history of Mandrake, from the very beginning until the present day. But why poor, Justin? My son is the most honorable man I know. When he found out what had happened, he was like a crazy man. And then he realized there was nothing he could do about it without disgracing both me and his mother. So finally, he accepted it, but it changed him. He used to be such a laughing, open, joyous young man. He became embittered, cynical. He was like a locked door, detesting the fact that he was living a lie. A locked door. <laughs> oh, dear, you know, I shouldn't really be telling you all this. Except you'd already guessed the important part, and I'm still vulnerable to a pretty face. You do realize I put myself in your hands. They're safe hands. Do you love my son? No. Mm-hmm. And does he love you? <laughs> Why should he? Oh, what I would give to be in his shoes. <laughs> Heavens! What a magnificent beast! He and Justin go so well together. My apologies for keeping you waiting. 